Hello everybody, my name is Ray. Welcome to the Evangelical Dark Web. Today, we're going to be talking about Joel Webin and the controversy surrounding his book that he published last year, Fight by Flight. And I gotta say, we're a year after publish and that book has been pretty vindicated in my opinion. So we're going to dive into some of the evidence that seems to favor the strategy of uh, fleeing hostile areas and moving to safer areas and that many people in the United States are doing right now. I am, and it's important to understand my perspective in this. I live in the state of Maryland and the part of Maryland that I live in is a place where a lot of people are fleeing hostile parts of Maryland to come to where I live in the state. Uh, so that's kind of where I live in the state, but I'm also you know, again, I live in an area that would be hurt by people doing this strategy. And that's because 40 minutes in any direction and you would have a better life. You know, you can get to Pennsylvania, West Virginia, Virginia, and probably have a much easier time uh, than you would in the state of Maryland. So I live in a state that would be hurt by uh, Joel Webb's strategy, yet nonetheless... I can't help but admire the strategy and, you know, I definitely support people doing that. I Who am I to say that you can't leave and move your family to have a better life? Who am I to say that? Uh, no one, really. So we're going to dive into that. But first, I want you to know Evangelical Dark Web is a Christian news gathering and commentary ministry. You can support our work over at evangelicaldarkweb.org slash join us linked in the description below. The Zealot and Peacemaker tier patrons can get a free autographed copy of my book, Winning Not Winsome, which I highly recommend you all get. Uh, it's linked in the description. And it is a book about spiritual warfare. And I don't necessarily talk about fight by flight. You know, I don't necessarily talk about moving from blue states into red states. But I do talk about, you know, making sure you're in a good church and how to do that. I do talk about... Uh, a lot of different ways that Christians can uh, build institutions and and strategies to uh, deploy and where to deploy our resources. A lot of stuff that I talk about, small little changes, most of it is all small things that we can change to make a big impact. It is for a, it. This book is a very good return on your investment. It's only nine dollars on Kindle, but the paperback is coming out next week, but the patrons can get a uh, signed copy, by the way, if you're a zealot or peacemaker tier. So, with that said, I wanted to dive into this post, uh, and this is from Eric Daughtry, and he gives a forecast for the 2023 apportionment. So, every 10 years, the United States does a census, and this census is what the congressional representation of the House of Representatives is based on. So as you can see from this, the blue states are getting hammered. This projection is that California will lose four seats. Uh, Oregon will lose one. Minnesota will lose one. Illinois will lose one. Pennsylvania loses one. New York loses three. And Rhode Island loses one. Now, Rhode Island would be relegated to only having an at-large district under this uh, thing. Uh, and we'll talk about what this would mean for the Electoral College, if anything close to this even manifests. I, I just find this to be very fascinating. The biggest benefactors are Texas at four and Florida at three. Texas gaining four congressional seats in one 10 year span after already gaining a couple at least on the last one and then florida gaining an additional three seats in the house of representatives like people are moving and there's a lot of transients going on right now idaho gaining another congressional seat that's a pretty big deal utah get getting another another big deal that would be their fifth i think uh arizona gaining another one again People are moving south because air conditioning is awesome, and these red states have much better, uh, they're, they're much more better governed. Uh, Tennessee, again, Conservative Inc. loves Nashville, Tennessee, and I can't really blame them. 
Nashville or Tennessee seems like a good place to live. Uh, North Carolina is perhaps the only state experiencing urban sprawl on a s- systematic level. Like it's everywhere in uh, North Carolina, yet it has remained reliably red. And I, I think uh, we're going to get Mark Robinson over the finish line in that gubernatorial race. And that dude looks like a Christian prince, perhaps. And then Georgia plus one, that's the one I'd be the most worried about because Georgia is not a state I think can stay Republican for long. I'm a little worried about Georgia in particular. Uh, A lot of the passers in Georgia are pretty weak. Uh, Andy Stanley in that orbit is mainly what I'm referring to, but you also have Louis Giglio out of uh, Georgia. So again, not exactly the best uh, church, uh, mega church culture down in uh, Georgia, but don't be going to uh, aspiring mega churches, you people. But this map just shows that people are implementing this strategy that Joel Webin talked about in his book, uh, Fight by Flight, and it's having a difference. It is going to have a difference. Now, I'm not confident this much will be reapportioned in the next uh, thing. This is a based on 2023 population estimates, and it's also a forecast. So there's a lot of variables that could change. A lot of times forecasts are based on the rate of things happening. Now, I think the rate of it will slow down, but Minnesota is a state that a lot of people are leaving. Andrew Isker famously announced, not famously, but he went viral for announcing that he's moving from uh, Minnesota to, I believe, Kentucky, if not uh, Tennessee, but along the Appalachian, uh, mountain range in one of those states, uh, and Joel Webin famously left, uh, California to go to Texas. Now, this is the impact that such a move would have on the electoral college. Uh, let me try and zoom out some, uh, so this impact on the electoral college is quite significant. Uh, specifically when you're talking about Arizona gaining one, uh, a lot of Republican states gaining one that are very reliably Republican, Utah having seven electoral college votes, Idaho having five, uh, Tennessee gaining an extra one, North Carolina gaining an extra one. These would be significant impacts, but Florida becoming a reliable Republican state having 33 electoral college votes and Texas being pretty reliably red as well. And I think that's going to continue. Uh, having 44 uh, major impact that cannot be understated. So those are just my thoughts uh, just to kind of get a bigger picture. Uh, This would make the Electoral College extremely winnable for Republicans. We would just have to, you know, maintain our current states, basically, and that there would be a huge you know, separation between the red states and the blue states. The red states would get redder and the blue states would get bluer. But Electoral College would be pretty dominated by the Republicans under this system. Ohio, I don't think, is going back to the Democrat Party. Arizona is a toss-up swing state and so is Georgia under this model. And maybe the Republicans can work on flipping Nevada and Wisconsin and also Pennsylvania. But in in this model, the uh, it's tw- 275 Republican electoral votes, and that's without Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania, or Nevada. This is pretty favorable terrain for the Republican Party because of the fight by flight that people are already doing. Uh, Joel Webin didn't come up with the strategy of moving to red states, People have been doing that for quite some time, but as Democrats become more hostile with their, you know, a lot of it's the transgender policies, uh, you know, the idea of taking kids from people's homes and, you know, the lockdowns that were pretty bad, but in the crime that's running rampant in a lot of these places, it's going to cause people to move. Uh, So... And when people move, that ultimately benefits the rest of the nation because the Electoral College. 
Uh, Redeem Zoomer's gone pretty viral lately because he has stated that, um, he has stated that, you know, the rurals don't matter, that people who move to rural places aren't make, going to make a cultural impact. And he talks about how Tim Keller was right about, you know, the emphasis on the city. Now, this is completely wrong, in my opinion. So, Redeem Zimmer's had a lot of cold takes. I still like the guy, admittedly, but he's had a lot of cold takes. He says, ruralist conservatism accomplishes nothing. It's not bad to be rural, but whoever owns the cities controls the culture. Tim Keller was right about that. And I just think, no, Tim Keller was wrong about that. Uh, my response to this is Tim Keller was wrong about that. The communists in China won because they dominated the rurals while the nationalists thought coastal city strongholds would prevail. Trump, 2016, ran the tables in rural regions and won. Uh, and, you know, other people talk about Franco also dominated the rurals first. So you got to recognize that there is more, you know, and, and also in a civil war, the rural areas are better to hold and better to start from than the urban population centers. So, if we have a red versus blue civil war, advantage reds. But overall, fight by flight is a viable strategy. It's, you know, might be derided as retreatism by people like Redeem Zoomer, but it's advancing in a different direction. If enough people move, the electoral college can get dominated and then the Democrats won't be able to get elected at a presidential level. This also might be the cycle that ends the ability for the Democrat Party to control the Senate on any level because three of the st states up, uh, seats up for grab are Montana, uh, Ohio, and West Virginia. These three states should be easily mopped up by the Republican Party. Uh, Manchin is not running in Ohio, so that should be a pretty easy flip. And that's just that they don't flip, you know, the other seats. I don't think the Republicans will take Arizona. And I had my prediction as well. Uh, and this is on Gab, by the way. Uh, and who knows if the Republicans can win this election because it is tough. And I think Trump is making it harder than it should be uh, because I don't think the messaging has been great. But nonetheless... The Republicans seem pretty confident in Arizona, and I, I think they can reliably win Arizona. I also think uh, Virginia and Michigan are safe Democrat bets. Uh, this is just my opinion. I think the four toss-ups are Nevada, Wyoming, or Nevada, Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, and Georgia. And other than that, I think the Republicans have a good shot at going on the offensive here. Uh so that's just my thought on the Electoral College. Let me know what you think is going to happen with the Electoral College. And let me know your thoughts on the whole fight-by-flight mentality. Have you done it yourself? Uh, do you plan to do it? Do you want to do it? So those are my thoughts. Uh, my name is Ray. This is the Evangelical Dark Web. If you like this kind of content, do subscribe to the channel, to the podcast if you are new. Also, uh, smash that like button. Uh, but until then, stay based. Christ is King, and we will catch you on the next one.